Welcome back. Welcome back. Load management episode three. We're going to rename this the load management group chat podcast. I think that just has a nice ring to it. Um, you know what I'm saying? And this is what we do all day anyway. Group chat it up, joke around, get on each other's nerves, push each other's buttons. You know what I'm saying? So this is just a look of, of what we of what we do on the on the uh, on the right. So we don't need no intro. Everyone knows what everyone is. We got BP here, we got Dot here, we got Zeem in that corner. But last this past week was the last episode of the last dance. Fellas. On a scale of one to ten, how sad are you that it's over? <laughs> Real sad. <laughs> devastated. Devastated. Only thing that was sports related, like we're talking about this documentary, like blow by blow, like it happened last night. Like, like this has been the only thing sports related that has been relevant for the last five weeks. Well, yeah, it's been five weeks. Yeah, ten episodes, yeah. five weeks. So I'm no, sad to no. see it go. Um, mm-hmm. what did this? What did this confirm for you guys? Like, how did you? I I, I wasn't happy with the ending. I wanted a little bit more in depth with the ending. Mm, I agree with that one. Um, I, I'll definitely admit that this has been a great five weeks. Just knowing that everybody's watching it same time live, we even know the outcome, and it's still suspense. You know, given all the background history, um, I definitely wanted it to go more in depth, like afterwards which it, it, it kind of did, but um, I just wanted to see all the media reports after what was said, how it ended. We got, you know, Steve Kerr's regulation of it, the whole bonfire, kumbaya nonsense, <laughs> MJ wrote poetry nonsense, but um, I definitely wanted to see more in depth. But listen, ranking wise, this deserves all type of awards. Um, that director did an amazing job, the insight, um, the timeline chronologically, he just did an excellent job. And um, overall, it, it was just well put together. Um, there's a lot of things I already knew about MJ. And there's a lot of things I learned. Uh, my opinion doesn't change about uh, those decades compared to basketball now. I'm, I ain't trying to start no beef, but my, those You're going to get into that later. <laughs> yeah, those views stay the same, but... Um, He's, he's on another pedestal, and he was the first, to me, rock star of sport athletes. Um, I don't know if Mike Tyson had this type of hysteria around him, but what I seen, um, and it was all off the strength of his play and championship play, so I definitely respect MJ in that regard. Um, I guess I'll go, but yeah, uh, actually, I'm the youngest out of this little podcast, so... <laughs> <laughs> the young fellow when MJ was coming up or leaving, I should say. But um, yeah, definitely learned a lot. Um, man, it just solidified that. Like, however you want to chalk it up, if you want to say his era was, wasn't that good, but we'll never know how Jordan will look in 2020. So I think when you're ranking, like, who did what, you have to look at how they dominated their era. And as far as like skill set, domination, like as far as getting the respect amongst his like, you know, peers, is it, it, it's just different. We just I, I know I've never seen that from athlete to another athlete. So it was it was kind of cool to see like the respect his competition showed him. So um I think mm. that kind of put a lot of things in perspective for me. Well being like the elder statesman I guess of the podcast, you know, <laughs> from the um from the young boy to the OG. Um, I mean, I remember a lot of that stuff. Like there was like little stuff that I was like, wow, like I like I forgot about that. Or they went into like more in depth into certain things that they didn't really go in depth with, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. <laughs> but my uh my my takeaway from it was that when he said that um when he said that they deserve the like the right to go out and lose it, you know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, after they won in 98, he's like, hey, we need to go, uh, come back one more time, defend our team, we'll see if we can do it again. And that, to me, kind of separates him from a lot of other uh, NBA players because, like, he's not given an inch, he's not given a quarter, he's like, yo, we 
are going to run it back and win it all over again. And he said, if we lose, we lose. Like, I can, like, yo, I can live with that, but I just can't live with not competing. And what, what they never addressed in this, in this, in this documentary um, that, you know, I, I've, that I've read is that MJ really wanted to come back and play, you know, when he came back for the Wizards because he wanted to compete against Kobe, Vince Carter, T-Mac, Pierce, and all them dudes. Even at that old age, he just wanted to compete. He just wanted to compete. And I think that that attitude, that, that kind of mentality of just, one, just, of just wanting to compete is what took him above and beyond because there have, I mean, he was a very, very gifted player and athlete, but there have been other guys who have been that physically gifted. But just the son, the son inside Jordan that just made him different. So that was my main takeaway. Facts. Now, I just to uh, my 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 only pushback with that documentary, and obviously it's his documentary, he could control the narrative, and regardless, we're just gonna eat it up, pause. But um, it was just like, yo, Michael Jordan, if you go upstairs and say, I need this done, that done, and all this loyalty and ties to fail, he was stubborn. And whether we like to believe it or not, he quit the game of basketball two times. So I hear he's compete, compete, compete. But when he didn't have nothing left, when the gas tank was empty, when he was mentally fatigued, every all these little things that he was saying, he walked away. And whether you like to, I'm not going to call it quitting, but quitting is another form of retirement when you feel like you don't have that burning desire. So I hear what you're saying, but he was able to rejuvenate where a lot of athletes just can't say, all right, I'm going to go play baseball, come back. All right, I want to leave two years and come. Like, it's just, I just want to pump the brake on because we try to make it like a mythical character. No, what I loved about this documentary, he was human and he did have mental. Barely. 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 But like, Barely. I respect that. No, no, but I, no, no. On the court, he's godlike. I'm just talking outside of it. He had to deal with his emotions and, and factors as well that if, if I don't know if you gauge what I'm kind of saying, Bobby. You know what I mean? No, I, I feel what you're saying, but, like, what you're taking into account is all the things that, like you said, off-the-court stuff that made you see that he was human. That was what ultimately took him away from the game. Like, he didn't leave the game because he was just done with it. After a 10-year career, three championships, your dad dies. Um, and this other scandal, it's not, you're not, it's not because you don't want to compete. You, 10 years, you got three chips. You kind of feel like you accomplished something at that point. It's not like you're just walking away from the game. And then the other circumstances that went with that was kind of his, uh, his reasoning, like I said, off the court that took him away from the game. But even with baseball, like that was, it took baseball for us to realize that he's not the greatest at everything. He's not the perfect figure. <laughs> he's not the perfect role model. Like, and even when you say this, this time off, like this retirement was one season, a season and a half, a little bit over a season and a half. So yeah. it wasn't like this long layover where with no, the Wizards, I, it was a different story. Yeah, Robin? right, yeah, okay. No, with no, the Wizards, right. it was a different story. He had probably, I want to say like three, four years off between, yeah, between coming, leaving in 98 and going back with the Wizards. That, when he took that time off, in 94 to 95, I mean, 93 to 94, he was, that was a year, maybe some change. So a year and a half off, that's not retirement. That's a break, if, if you ask me. We're, just, we're looking at the same situation with a mellow now, if you, if you look at it like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I but listen. All right, go ahead. BP, um, you got to think, like, up until, <laughs> up, until this, up until that, like, point of that first retirement, He's got like what three rings, three MVPs, all, all NBAs, all those scoring titles. That's a career for a, a lot of people. So at that point, it's like shit. Like what else am I gonna? What else do I need to accomplish? And I feel like you looking at it from the standpoint of he got to rejuvenate after he took the time off. We heard LeBron say, and I'm not making any LeBron-Jordan comparisons, but we heard LeBron say at his age, 35, 
I take time off from the game at this age, my, my body shuts down. It's tough to get back. So imagine being away from the game of basketball, the everyday grind from, I mean, you were a dual sport player. You played football. You played basketball. I remember the kids in high school that were, uh, we had a kid on our high school team, Gary Aqua. He played for Holy Cross, but he was also very good at basketball. I remember coach always saying, yeah, you got to get in shape. Football uh, condition is way different from basketball. Mm -hmm. So imagine being away from a year and a half and everybody's just playing regular basketball. They're training, everything. And he has to get back into that. And then comes back and he's and it's still the best. The league. I, that, <laughs> that's just like unheard of, kind of. Nah, I, I did like how they showed he knew that. His body knew that, and then they built that gym at the Space Jam, uh, yeah. you know that that full court. So that was dope to see. I think that I th I think that where like so, like to put it in like a in like a broader context that people can understand a simple uh, example. All right. So you have Shannon Sharp and Nick Wright who's, who's going to pick at every little thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Like oh, like he's not doing this, and he left, and he quit, and he retired, and all oh, that half a year counts, blah blah blah. But listen. The reason why he left is that sometimes I think that we, and sometimes I'm guilty of this too, is that we look at the fans and we look at it through like the prism of like numbers. So like, okay, like he was still on the top of his game. He was, he was still average, you know, like he, re, he retired after having 41 points, eight rebounds, eight assists in the NBA finals, right? So he's still at the, at the top of the mountain, at the, at the complete uh, apex. But the thing that people don't, don't realize is that a lot of times as an athlete, you, you have to get there mentally. Like you have to like chat, like there has to be something in front of you that's like a challenge. And to be, and to be honest with Bird and Magic and Isaiah basically either retired or just on their last legs, he already killed Barkley. He killed Ewing. He's killing Reggie. He's like killing all the dudes that he, that, that he came in with that he sees as his contemporaries. He's like, yo, and, and there's no young guys coming up because even after he left, um, Olajuwon won two. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he's not even looking at Penny and Shaq as a threat. Penny's not even in the league yet. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, damn, like, I can't get up to play against against this dude or that dude. Like, I'm just, I'm just out of here. Then they said the reason why he came back, oh, like, I can, I can still get out here and, and, and challenge these dudes and beat these dudes because there was another beast coming up in the Eastern Conference, the Orlando Magic, and they ended up beating them in, in 95, and then they swept them in 96. Shaq and, Shaq and Penny, you know, Shaq's uh, first team All-NBA averaging 30, Penny's first team All-NBA averaging 20 and, uh, 20 and 9, and they swept them. So it's like, every, and so like when he, so when, so when, so when he left in 98, he's like, if I can't run it back with my guys, why am I even going to do it? Why am I even going to play? But that's my thing. He had control and power. I, I guess I'm thinking about I dis it. I, dis today. I disagree yeah, with you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're right, because I, I don't think, think he had that NBA play. Yeah, 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 because yeah. you're thinking like, all right, he's going to It's yeah. not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you could get a coach fired, because Magic Johnson got, 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 a, um, got a coach fired in 1981. But mm -hmm. Like, I think that the Bulls, like, had already kind of, like, the, and, and so, like, I'm going to just bring this topic up and then, and then spin it back to y'all. So, what, do y'all think they could have got number seven? And so, I'll just say yes. I think they could have got seven because even though their tank was on E, if you remember, that 99 season was a lockout season. Oh. Was Nick, that the first the one? Yeah. Nick's won the E, says the E, C. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Knicks, won the, yo Knicks won the East as an eight seed. Like, so you would have gave Jordan like that. Like, that season didn't start until, like, January. Yeah, it was a 50 games. Yeah, yeah. bro. And no, and no disrespect, the that was the Spurs is great. I respect Dunk. I respect the Admiral. But in the finals, for the most part, I think experience matters. And that would have kind of – I feel like that would have played a factor – and number seven, you know, especially if he would have came back for number seven, I would have felt like that would have been like his farewell tour. Like 98 wasn't really the farewell tour. I was like, damn, they want to do us like this and I'm out. 99 would have probably been like, all right, let's go for this last one. And then boom, we're, we're throwing it in, throwing the towel in. So. 
also one more thing I wanted to combat Zeem's point about like giving up like we already had this in our mind start of the 97-98 season this is it this is the last dance we named it the last dance if I'm Michael Jordan and I end on that like poetic ending and like I said we don't have the business side of it situated like I don't know if my guys are coming back we're gonna have this team what the roster situation is I'm not even gonna risk my legacy at that point with how I just ended a three-peat, a repeat on a that's buzzer the, That's beater. not a competitor then. That's not a competitor nah, then. How are you not if a competitor? Taking, you, if, you, if, you, if, you if, if, six. If, if you're worried like, about your blemishes. You need to do? Nah, if you're worried about your potential blemishes, uh, then that then that's not a competitor's mentality. First of all, he's the ultimate competitor. I don't want to misconstrue. I just want, you know, what I enjoyed about the documentary is the, People finally see he was human, right? Just imagine what LeBron, like, he, oh, nitpicking Shannon Shop, Nick Wright. This nonsense, Jiggy just try to skew out. Nah, that, nah, that's, there. nah, that's, that, yo, <laughs> Shannon okay, Sharp, okay, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm gonna stop you. Right, I'm gonna stop you. Like, Shannon Sharp should be ashamed of himself. Yeah, he'd be oh, Shannon Sharp was a great, great, oh, listen, great football. Great. Yeah, play, right? Great. <laughs> yo, he has a gold jacket. And the fact that you meet ride another man like this. Now, why I gotta, see, now that's what's continue. Wrong with our culture. That's what's wrong with black people. We always try to say, oh, we show someone oh, that was meat riding, Now he wants to use the black race. culture. Oh, man. Man, just make your point. Make your point and go. Make your point and go. <laughs> My point was that we, we just, I just love the fact that I'm like, yo, he was human. He did have gambling issues. He was emotional. He did cry. He did love Gus. He showed love his own personal ways. And I love the realness of it. His teammates didn't like him. Kerr said it was shock, emotional, because he was a bully of a teammate. That was Kerr's words. So it was dope just to see both sides. And I just always, I know, because, you know, I'm not a millennial. Yeah, I am a millennial, whatever it is. I'm just thinking of today's athlete. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of today's athlete in the sense of, they, the nitpicking that goes on now, just imagine if that was going on then. And then what, my last question, can you guys tell me that backup center's name, fat black dude with the goggles that was in on the last play of the game? Uh, what was his name? E Tom Carr. Oh, oh, uh, e Tom Carr uh, or something like that? E Tom Carr? Something Antoine Carr. Carr. Yo, listen. Antoine Carr. Don't that, hate on that. That was the hate on him. Look horrific out there. Yo, first of all, nah, but I don't like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Let me let like, yo listen, man. I ain't even gonna hold you. If you're gonna find when you finally watch Game Six in that broadcast, they keep saying, "Yo, where's Antoine Carr? Where's Antoine Carr?" Because the game before that, to get them to a Game Six, he made yep. like six or seven shots, like, like in in the second half to help get them there. <laughs> yeah, you you like, can't you know really like, say that because if we go to the last couple of finals, like yo, at twenty years from now they're gonna be like Boris D. But he was yeah, you know, like just looked at like, Boris D. Yeah, you'd be like that guy Boris D. How is he guarding the wrong? How you know he was trash? You don't know who he is. You think he looked crazy out there? He looked crazy out there. No, he didn't. Bro, like the clip they showed. The clip they showed, he looked like yeah. that Come dude. On, he like didn't know what to do. Like yeah. That's why I'm just saying, how did Boris Diaw look? Boris, Boris Diaw, yeah, he was skilled. Ball handling. But you wouldn't know that just Boris game. Game. You didn't know no, car. You're just yeah, looking but, at him. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I hear you. I'm just talking about the clips that they showed. He was getting <laughs> cooked every clip, and I'm dying in my head. Like, where is Oscar tag? What is going on? And then I see the last play of the game, he was like, side view and I'm looking at the goggles fogging up and it was just it was a bad look yo let me ask you a question right let me ask you a question right you just recently watched the 2016 uh game where Cleveland beat Golden State right facts how dumb did Festus Azili look getting caught on the pick and rolls found a three-point shooter out in no the stops I'm, I'm not I'm not trying like, to That's what I'm saying. It's just so well, dumb. Listen, I'm, yeah, I'm like, just talking the optics of it. I'm just talking the optics. I'm, I'm talking optics, optics too. Festus, Festus is crazy. He's Jack. He's Jack. Not for nothing. He's yeah, Jack not for nothing. Jack. If you find the right clip, Zim, and tw if, yes, if Day Day grows up 10 years from now, 
and LeBron documentary comes out, if the right clip is put out there, you're gonna be like the daddy's gonna be like. That's who was guarding LeBron. If you just look at boys, like this guy's fat, he's out of shape. But we know because we've seen it, the dude actually was a great defender on LeBron for that series. He was very skilled. Yo, listen, all I know is this is that Z man, you know, Z man watch I, anything I, before 2010. Yo, I expect like a 12 year old to talk like that, <laughs> but not somebody that's almost my age. Yo, listen, because you, you can't grow you, facial hair, don't mean you oh, not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Nah, listen, it was man. a great documentary. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna move us forward. So, so we're gonna bounce in between topics. We're gonna talk a little bit sports. We're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on in the uh, in the um, news. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the entertainment industry. I'm gonna keep us flowing. Listen. We saw a tweet this weekend that showed a dude wiling out on his girl because mm. she's the only fan. Mm. Fellas, if your significant other made an only fans, what would your reaction be and how would you handle it? Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I, I, I was like, I did. <laughs> I seen a lot of tweets basically saying it's her body, it's her decision. <laughs> Gotta respect it. I'm like, what, bro? First of all, every woman in the world has like, you know, gets to say what they want to do with their body. Get to say what they, whatever they want to do with their life, they could go do it. But if you want to be with me, uh-huh. no only thing. So, and that's that's the fine line. Like, you don't have, you can still respect women and respect one woman independency and not want to see your partner go do something that kind of you feel would be like, well, because when you think of your lady, you don't want you, it's certain things about your lady that you want to know that only you're able to see and to share with her. You don't want that being, what, what's, what makes it so special then at that point, if everybody could see what was only supposed to be for your eyes. And that goes mm. versa for the dudes. Facts. That's valid. I'll say, that's, that's that's very, valid. that was very good, Doc. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, very good. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll say this. I'm going to jump on it next. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, poor, poor. Hey, Jesus Christ. Whoa. This <laughs> kids in here, man. What are you doing? Kids here. You're right. You're right. All right. Pull it, pull it. So, um, my only thing was she, what I seen and what she was saying was, you going to take care of me? You going to pay my bills? You're going to do this, help me get to school, whatever the case may be. And then it just, optic-wise, it just looked bad because he looked like a dweeb playing video games. Like, you know what I mean? So he looked like a dude that wouldn't be able to provide. Me, personally, I agree with everything that Dot said. But I'll be like, you know what? Do you, boo-boo, and I'm going to respect you from afar. You know what I mean? You can go do that and be single. And they seemed like they had a conversation prior to her doing it. And then that's why he went off and made the ultimatum like, yo, we're not going to be together no more. Women, yes, I respect your body. You could do what you want. You know, you guys have been fighting for your rights for a long time. Birth control and abortion. I feel your pain. But I just always have issues with girls attack other girls more than, because guys, you know, we care, but we don't care unless it's our personal thing. But then they shame girls, like, look at her. She's a hoe. She's selling this. She's selling that. But then in the same breath, be like, oh, it's her body. It's this. It's that. It's, you know, in the third book. Listen, I can't be with no chick that has the OnlyFans page. You can't be sending nip shots and ass shots and crack sh- you know, ass crack shots. And I can't even get that when I'm on break at lunch. It just cannot happen in there, for real, for real. That, that's my stance on it. Yeah, echo both of those guys. BP's yeah. like, I ain't even getting That's into wild. it. That's I ain't wild. even getting into it. Nah, I, uh, everything Doc said in the first place, nothing against whoever got OnlyFans or whoever's on there doing their thing. If you're making your bag, make your bag. However, I would never be comfortable with it. Um, Yeah, that's just smiling right my team. All right, so BP, what if yeah. it was a foot fetish OnlyFans? So she's only showing her toes to those freaks who likes toes. Oh, the toes? We can do that as long as the bread's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how you're the kid. 
the price got to be right, though. We not <laughs> we not showing tolls, but <laughs> I see it for eight ninety nine. I need to see receipts and everything. Facts, facts, facts. I already know Jiggy saying, "Yeah, Jiggy's with it. Anything bring a dollar." <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. Um, I like yo. I don't. I don't really have any problems with like. I don't have any problems with OnlyFans. Like, if you want to do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? It's a free. It's a free country. Get your get your money right. But what I will say is that you know every every action causes an equal or opposite reaction. So if I'm in a relationship and I'm like, hey, like I don't feel comfortable with you making an OnlyFans page, like. And she's like, well, hey, you know, I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, cool. That's it. Like, you know, what I'm saying? and y'all and y'all and y'all know me well. You know, I can just hold stone cold, just just chop. So I just think that what happens is that I I think that sometimes what people do and say on social media isn't really how they feel. So like people would be like, oh girl, get your money, yo, woman, uh, woman empowerment, should be able to do whatever you, want. and that is true. But then you know what I'm saying, you have to deal with what comes with when you make those decisions. Like yo, being a being on OnlyFans is worse than being a stripper, because at least if you're a stripper, it's like you can only see it. Like pe people only locally are seeing what you're doing, but if you're on OnlyFans, I mean that's forever. People are screenshotting that. People are. Facts. Leaking it, people are saving it, people are, you know what I'm saying, are just are just recording it. So it's like, damn, like, is anything sacred? Is anything for for me? You know, yeah. everybody can pay their $9.99 and see you. And but like Zim Zim said earlier about the, the, the foot fetish, but I don't even know that because you guys <laughs> do some wild stuff like Oh baby, put some hot sauce on them feet for me. <laughs> like, you don't want you ain't go for that, bro. Put some hot sauce. Yeah, so you've been watching yeah, Dopey Menace. Like, put some hot bread. sauce on the dog. Bread? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so crazy? You know what's so crazy is some dudes, I'm not saying pimp their girls, but they actually are the one taking uh, the photos, yeah, approving yeah. of it, making the accounts for the shorty. So don't get it twisted. Some dudes are all right with it if you're bringing that bacon, like BP says, to the family, to the squad. But how she did it in that viral clip is she She's went behind hers. his back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had no I mean, issue with that dude. I mean, I just think that that's like, you know what I'm saying? If that's the, like, some couples have that lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I, I think that's when it could pop. I mean, it's not for me, but in my mind, I'm thinking it'll work the best if, okay, you know what I'm saying we're into that kind of thing and we're swinging and doing whatever or we have an open relationship then if that's the kind of relationship and that's how y'all giving it up it'll probably work beautifully you know what I'm saying but I, yeah you got to be a certain type of you, like you said you got to be a certain type of relationship you got to be a certain type of comfortable with yourself with your sexuality and with your mate to be honest so I don't know to each his own no, I, yo I heard that Zim is starting the OnlyFans page soon Oh, nah, I listen. I ain't listen. gonna lie. A couple of joints told me they had the link already, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, now, now for nothing, I'm gonna put in the group chat later the link. I need you guys to. Oh send man, <laughs> I'm not promoting. I'm gonna report you. <laughs> like, this guy is nuts. It's, it's, it's called African Grey Sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Man, you gonna have all the old white ladies in the in the Midwest purchasing. <laughs> you have all the old ladies in the Midwest purchasing. Stupid. Oh That's man! Hilarious. So like, so let's just move that conversation forward, man. So like, yep. Just dating in general, man. In this state, like you know, what I'm saying we see it on social media all the time. Rhode Island people, uh, Rhode Island chicks are basic and whack and and thotties. R I dudes ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, they're they're in they're in 30 different girls DMs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's just you know, um, I have one girl that um, that uh, says she had a boyfriend and she says she found love in a hopeless state. <laughs> you know what I'm I like saying? That. I like that. That was so cool. So I was like, oh, you're, like I haven't heard like the um like the Rihanna track playing and playing it. And that's kind of yeah. That was creative. 
So, yo, what, what are some of the ups and downs of just dating in Rhode Island, even though some of us have been off the market for a long time? Right. Um, small. Some of it is so small and not for mm -hmm. nothing. I think you need to have tolerance. Just knowing that. Language, Zim. Language, remember. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why yeah. I had to. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. um, yeah, you have to have tolerance knowing that someone already touched your significant other. You may know somebody. The, what is it called? The six degrees of separation. separation. It'll be closer than you actually know it. And if you have that build up, if you have that tolerance and knowing that you had a past as well, that person had a past, and it is what it is, and especially in Rhode Island. But one thing I do like is before you get into a situation, you can do your research, right? So that's the beauty of it in, in, in my sense of the research is out there. Now you got to take another faith of putting yourself out there to find that research because you know, seeing like and it, it happens and it trickles and it's a trickle effect but at the end of the day the six degrees of separation especially in this state is so, so simple it's so easy um shoot i even went out of state to find mine and still new people and this it's just it's just that's how it is there's nothing you could do about it you just got to accept it and just have that tolerance just knowing that you have a past that person has a past you can find your research but if you're willing to move on and rock with that person yo find that love in a what is it whatever state you know what i mean hopeless state hopeless yeah, state. Oh, no, i agree 100 percent. but the thing that i think you have to be extra careful about and you have to be like can't be insecure because there's certain people that may have tried to like you know holla at like your significant other and Ooh. It didn't work out or like it didn't go in their favor or a rumor started and they're calling that person out of their name like oh she's a hoe he's a hoe he's a player mm. this and that and that may not necessarily be the case but they're taking one little instance of something that they heard or something that they thought they saw it didn't go their way and then that becomes a narrative because it's such a small state that you say one thing if it gets around enough people or enough people hear it that tends to be the what sticks, and that's not always the case. That's I that, sorry, to, sorry to cut you guys off, but that was a hundred percent spot off mm -hmm. right there. That's fact city. Look at that, yo, hey, yo, that's so pleased with himself right now. Look at that's on fire today. Yeah, he is, he is. Bobby, man, um, you know what I'm saying? Can we can we get some words of wisdom? No, nah, same thing, man. Like like they were saying, um, just in such close proximity, like nine times out of 10, you know somebody that knows somebody that knows the person that you're talking to or that you're trying to holler at. So I think, again, like Dot said, it's kind of just feeling people out for yourself. Um, don't take people's narratives into account until you kind of get your own feel for that person. Um, and, but, yeah, your, uh, your background kind of precedes you, so, if there's a hundred people saying something, you gotta kind of take that with a grain of salt too. It's like, damn, this one said it, this one said it, and this one said it. Like, people don't just make up certain things about people, but like you know, we are in Rhode Island. I say Rhode Island's the biggest high school in the world. Like, it's everything so tight. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody gossips about everybody. So, again, it's it's about how comfortable you are with yourself, how comfortable you are with your your lifestyle, and how you are, how you are about your, your time. So, I don't know, man. Dayton, like I said, Rhode Island is just too small. Nah, I, I, I think that one of the things that you guys really said that was really like, um, you know what I'm saying, that, that I really do 100% agree with, that you gotta kind of put your pride to the side, man. Especially, like, you know what I'm saying, like the, um, I'm like the, I'm like the older that you, that you get. So me, I'm like older, so like I'm not worried about what a girl I'm talking to or dating or where did in the past, as long as it's not something like crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like who even like cares? You know what I'm saying? Like because m m like most of the growth that'll come in the relationship happens behind closed doors anyway. So like every now and again, you're out, you might bump into someone that you know that he or she might have slept with. You know what I'm saying? And it's like big deal. So what that happened seven years ago, happened four years ago, happened two. Mm. Like it happens. It's life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like I mean, I 
in this state, like if you you let that distract you, it could really eat you up and it'll ruin your relationship. You could have like, even if a chick does have kind of like a questionable past, if she's like, if she's doing well in life and and like she's on the same time you're on in terms of like achieving um success and open mobility, that's better than having some like than having some like, you know, born again virgin or some like chick that only mess with one or two guys, but just but has nothing between the ears, you know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just about what you can tolerate, like you said, and just kind of putting your pride to the side and, and just and just not worrying about what other people think, especially in, in this state. Jake, yeah. I wanted to then, piggyback off of one of your points that you made. I think a lot of issue too is like people hold on to like little flings that they may have had at certain yeah. points in their life and they're like, mm. Yeah, I used to hit that or yeah, I used to mess with her. It's like Dog, you took her on a date, you had hookah once with her, like, you never <laughs> messed with her, bro, like, that wasn't your chick, like, you know what I mean? You guys went to dinner once, you know what I mean? And But now that's the narrative, oh, yeah, I used to mess with her, or I used to talk to her, and it's like, right. what's, what was, real? like, be real, what was the extent of this, mm. and how long ago was it? You can't tell yeah. me that you used to talk to her when you was 19 and you're 32 now, like, I don't care about <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Like, let's be realistic about timeline and, and true, like, extent of the relationship. Right. And just to even piggyback off on that, um, our ride, we used to say L-O-D all the time, man. Dudes fabricate stories. L-O-D means lie on Lying you. on you. Yeah, you already know. You meet. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of dudes, BP's right, that they'll say messing. And messing is you got a phone number and you had two text message conversation. And it was you being thirsty saying, good morning, good morning, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, good afternoon. <laughs> And all of a sudden that, when you get in your group chats, when you get into the club or shorty walks by or, oh yeah, I used to mess with that. And that just mess with dudes' heads like, damn, you know what I mean? Where, and it goes both ways too, guys and girls. You know what I'm saying? Very territorial around uh, Rhode Island. And it is what it is. You just got to maneuver through it, do your homework. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to make the final decisions and just rock out with it. And I like the point that Jiggy made. As long as you guys are on the same accord, leveling up, you got to say, ooh, you got to say, mess the world up. <laughs> One more point I wanted to bring uh -oh. up, too. Like, uh oh Bobby got it. Yeah, I'm on fire yeah. with this. Bobby, like, <laughs> yo, like, listen. No, because I'm taking it. I can speak on it. I'm taking it. I can speak on it. But, um, like, the narrative about, like, when females are all oh, Rhode Island dudes ain't this, or, or, or when, even when dudes would be like, Rhode Island chicks are this, is. My thing with Rhode Island is that was your experience. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. messed with five people that didn't work out for you or that cheated on you or were bad to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those are your choices. Not everybody in Rhode Island carries that label. Not all black men or not all Spanish men. Like, mm -hmm. when we get down, I hate when people just name their own experiences and say, now that whole genre of people or that whole extent of people are not good. So, like, right. I don't know. Yeah, like hey, I said, that. man, them dudes is foul just like us. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really the reality of it. Like, where <laughs> you're from, like, you know, girls are always going to say, like, oh, I don't like, I don't like these Harlem dudes. I don't like these, like, you know, Queens dudes. Uh, I'll never date a Rhode Island dude. But then, like, I could be, if I'm going somewhere for the weekend, if I'm going to Miami for the weekend, I could be any dude you want me to be, but I could, <laughs> it's no different from the dude here that you're, you're running away from. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes, like, you know, I think sometimes when those kind of statements are made, the smartest thing isn't being put into perspective. And you have to ask yourself sometimes, like as a person, boy and girl, why am I attracting this kind of person? Why? Mm anyone take me seriously mm. instead of saying everybody ain't shit like what about you is the reason why you keep ending up in these situations because it's it's, it's, it's not everybody you know my boy Zee, man, can you please touch today. on that z can, can you please touch on that nah you speaking facts in the sense of uh people have a hard time of doing self-assessment you know what i mean um mm. it has to be others um, before it's them. And if you find yourself finding yourself a situation with dudes that are mistreating you, you have to 
you know, uh, move differently, act differently, make standards, um, you know, put criteria on, find out, you know, what you're looking for. And a lot of what I see in Rhode Island is um, they take their baggage with them from relationship to relationship. And that's what ends up dooming that next opportunity that could be promising, but he is paying the debt of what your last boyfriend did. And that's what goes on in Rhode Island. But I will say, when out of towns come to Rhode Island, they are love happy it. with our John. Yeah. So we Rhode Island has beautiful thinking, women. Yeah, we got to start, you know, praising the beautiful women. Absolutely. And they got to understand their worth as well and understanding how they're moving and grooving out there because they're sloppy as well. And if you're moving sloppy, the rhetoric is going to attach to your name. And then when you're trying to filter out of it, you know what I mean? It, it's just going to stick with you. So you just got to be careful, man. But Rhode Island, I like what BP said, man. It's like a huge, huge high school and different lunch tables. That's how, that's what I call the cities. Different lunch tables, different type of characters. And, um, you know, it is what it is, man. So what lunch table are you sitting at? Uh, the promoter I'm, table. <laughs> I'm sitting at the promoter table, the DJ table. You know what I mean? I'm going to sprinkle a little... Uh, basketball leagues here and there, so I might walk over and chill with Dot over there. I might go with the with the businessman with Jiggy over there. I'm gonna go with <laughs> I'm gonna go with BP with the Stoners over there. You know, what I mean? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm like a chameleon. You know, what I mean, I can adjust in any environment. So, so but speak, that's just, hold on. Speaking of relationships, I'm I'm mm -hmm. audible real real quick. Speaking of relationships, how do you feel about your man 6 9 getting all in Snoop Dogg's relationship? Oh, wow, man. This dude's a clown. Like, why are we? I don't want to talk about 6 9 anymore. Call me. I need 6 9 talk. I want no more 6 9 talk. He's a clown. I, I, I have I, 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 Raiden's VP. Yeah, Raiden's <laughs> Well, that's my take on it. So I'm going to be the angry I'm gonna be the angry OG when it comes to 6 9 I don't want to talk about this clown anymore. Um, a while and out, man. Like, it, it, it's. I don't, you know what's so crazy? And it dawned on me the other day. I know I'm drifting off and I'm coming back. I notice in this society, we are okay. No, let me rephrase this. In this society, what I notice, we are okay with domestic violence over snitching. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Domestic we violence are. over snitching. I, 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 I'm noticing that. And then all the only reason why I said that, and I know it's a low blow, but I, I want to know watching, what you're comparing. Though. No, no, I was watching the Chris Brown video with him and Drake. Great video. Um, no guidance. And I'm looking at him like, damn, Chris Brown really could have been that dude. And I'm thinking, why he wasn't that dude? Oh, because he beat on Rihanna. You know what I mean? And then now, look, he's back, accepted in the culture. We're fine, whatever the case may be. And I just, it made me sit there. And I was, you know, I was talking to Ness about this, like, yo, Dudes is okay with a dude beating a woman and they go outraged and do all this, but didn't really campaign. But now they're campaigning on sn it was just it was just a weird all right. So all right, so I think that you're wrong. I think okay. you're wrong. And this plays into our whole NBA argument. You forget and you and you think that just what's happening right now is mm -hmm. what is the is what is just is is what's gospel. Chris Brown was like on track to be Michael Jackson, right? Okay. He had Wrigley's commercials, he had Sprite commercials. He was like a pop sensation. He had that altercation with Rihanna and, and it took like, I mean, he was on Larry King in a bow tie begging. He had to do all this like public service announcement. He had to sing for his supper, bro. And the level that he was on at that, at that time, He's never gotten back to. He doesn't have any any endorsements. He's 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 like completely on the other side of the culture that we always talk about. That we that we love the music, but we know is wrong. Like yo, everything Chris Brown, like yo, he he like threatened and antagonized um Karuchi. He threatened to kill her new boyfriend Victor uh, Cruz. Like yo, mm. okay. there's a lot of people out there that don't mess with Chris Brown. And Chris Brown has never fully gotten back to where he was. In this, in, in America, after time goes by, people will soften and forgive you for certain things. 
just like if six nine would would have came out and been not antagonizing people and just been like regular, like after a year or two, people would have just like let it like would have just moved on. Uh yeah, yeah. You 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 definitely uh helped my memory in that regard. Chris Brown my did man. get it bad. But you know, I it just dawned on me. But back to six nine. He is wrong with this whole Snoop Dogg situation. But then again, these rappers keep coming out and jumping in the fire. And you can't roll in the mud with pigs. Once he once Snoop Dogg commented on Meek Mills thing, and 6ix9ine seemed like damn Drake already killed Meek Mills. Nothing more I can do to bury him. He went to the deepest of lows. He went after a Hall of Fame legend of God and he executed it perfectly then he got the celine powell chick to corroborate everything and she executed it perfectly so i kind of blame sick uh snoop dogg himself for giving six nine the opportunity and then to be so sloppy in this thing but six nine violated you know that that's just that's just bad cold i would even there's a couple of things i would even wish on my enemy and that's jail and to mess up your relationship that's just some foul foul yeah, I blame I blame Snoop, man. I blame Snoop. Like you don't like well the kid, look what he just did. Like look what he just told. So what won't he if he could say all of that, what won't he do? He's born in nineteen ninety six. Like he don't really like he don't he doesn't get it yet. He doesn't understand the the nature of the things that he's doing, the ripple effect of these things. So why do you even have to Go mention the kid. Like the more you mention him, the more he's gonna troll you. The more he's gonna try to make jokes, make take serious situations, and get a ha ha out of it. So it's just like Snoop doesn't need to. I get other rappers. Like I get Rich the Kid. Like he's kind of he's okay, but he he still could kind of use that clout. Snoop okay. Dogg is a Hall of Famer, legend, hip hop pioneer. He don't need to bring Six Nine's name up. He don't need to acknowledge it. Anything. So I kind of yeah. he did that to himself. I, I feel bad for what happened. I know his household was probably crazy, but he did it to himself. I um yo I I remember a interview that Snoop Dogg did with Jamie Foxx, and they were talking about the movie American Gangster, and like Jamie Foxx and crew was like, yo, this movie's crazy. We loved it, and. Snoop was, yeah, Snoop goes, yeah, I loved it until the dude started snitching, right? And so, and Jamie Foxx, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, he gave him the Kazim, oh, well, you know, if they said you're going to do all these years, you mean to tell me you wouldn't snitch? And he said, they already told me that when I was on trial for murder and I didn't snitch. So I think that that's something probably like a little bit deeper with Snoop in terms of that kind of, ethics, codes, behaviors. Like, I mean, I think that like Jay-Z and Nas and everyone else, Dre, all from that class, they're not gonna even get no attention, bro. Like, he he even tried to drag Drake into it a little bit and Drake was just like, bro, I ain't even, bro, like, like I'm not worried about you, bro. I, I, I have too much money to even be, to even be bothered with this. So I think that I think that it's a not like Snoop the only OGs that really like weighed in since he's been out or, or whatever because I think that like that that's just his moral code because he was standing like he was fighting for his life and then snitch on his on his you know on his uh bodyguard or whatever so that I hear you I hear you. and that and that was this type of sentiment I was trying to say last week. In the last episode, make sure you guys still go check that out. It's up there on YouTube. <laughs> but um, about how, that's what Meek Mill felt like. Damn, I've been in and out of jail. I could have dropped the dime on this or that or said, you know, this happened. And I'm getting all these prisoners out of reform. So it was just against his moral code. Noob got too emotional, personalized it, slid in 6 9s DMs. Like, you didn't think he was going to screenshot that? Like, just these little things I just felt like the OG made a lot of rookie mistakes. And I was going to leave it at that. Valid. Like he, he's playing a game of Nana Nana Boo Boo. Like, that's what yeah. he's doing. Like, it's... Yeah, valid. Um, I, I'm going to move us back to sports, right? So, yeah. 
the ESPN.com released their NBA top 100 player list. Um, some of the notables, obviously, um, Braun rated number two all time. Kareem Abdul Jabbar rated number three all time. Bill Russell number four all time. And Michael Jordan coming in number one. Um, a big debate that I saw all over the debate shows, but I really didn't indulge in. I, I, I kind of wanted to wait till we got here. Was they had Steph Curry ranked 13 above Kevin Durant. Who was rated number? I think it was number fifteen, and then no, I think I think it was twelve and thirteen, just like that. Uh, Curry. Curry's thirteen, Durant's fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they had Isaiah Thomas rated below or higher up, how however you want to um to, uh, discern that. They had him rated below John Stockton, Steve Nash, Allen Iverson. And so just that, to clear up the numbers, hmm? who you said was rated below him? So basically, people that were like rated higher, with like lower numbers, were John Stockton, Steve Nash, and Allen Iverson over Isaiah Thomas. So that, and those and those went in order. So it was twenty eight Stockton, twenty nine Iverson, and uh, thirty Nash, and then thirty one was it. Um, I think why even though my personal belief, I think with those rankings, you can't get too personal with it you have to go off of accolades mm. and it trust me he does have the accolades like he has the chips you know what i'm saying um he has the body of work but i think stockton is there because as far as like a point guard perspective he has records that are probably never going to be broken you know what i'm saying and then i just feel like Nash has the two MVPs. Uh, he kind of like kind of followed up with that pick and roll game after John Stockton. And I just feel like Curry is just like changed the game of basketball. Like the way like you even have to, it's basically every time Curry's on the court, it's really a, a five on four. You know what I'm saying? Because of the attention he demands. Like he changed the way you play defense. He changed the, what's a good shot versus a bad shot. So I think that's kind of why IT got that short end of the stick. Because a lot of those dudes, you don't have time to really go by, like, what was happening in the now. You're really going to just go by, like, accolades, to be honest. Yeah, no, I agree. I, st I don't know. Something still bothers me about Nash's, uh, I want to say it was his second MVP. That second MVP still bothers me, if I'm not he mistaken. Josh. Yeah, Josh is the numbers guy. I believe that year, I want to say he was 18, and he averaged, I want to say, like a, close to 12 assists, over 11. Um, but still, I just don't – that – those numbers, I don't know. That that year – what year was that? Oh, seven? That was – I think that was that was 2000 – that was 2006, 2006 season. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I That always bothered me a little bit because in that race was also – Besides Kobe, D Wade was in that race. Um, who else was in that? Shaq. Race? Shaq Shaq was still relevant. Duncan. Dirk. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there was a lot of notables that I get the whole wild wow factor of that first year. Um, and then and, and that first year, I want to say he averaged close to 13 assists that first year he won MVP. And he and he was leading the league in assists by a mile. So I have mm -hmm. no issue with that. I don't know, but that second MVP. Still don't sit right with me. Um, as far as him being better than IT, I would never put that. Steve Nash, I would never put that. Um, I would say Stockton and, and IT can go either way with it. Um, and then Iverson in that mix with them, I have no problem with Iverson being ahead of uh, IT or Nash. Man, uh what I noticed, and I've been preaching this in this group chat for a long time, it's all about narrative. And the time when Nash won it, it was all this him and D'Antoni, eight seconds or less, eight seconds or less. That was the narrative. That's what was going on. That was the hot thing. And the Suns had a great team. I think uh, Q Rich was on that team. Amari was on that team. Joe Johnson. I think J Sean Marion. Joe Sean Johnson. Marion. Yep, Joe Johnson. Um, so Amari, Steve. 
Uh, Zim, not to not to cut you off, but to I'm I'm gonna disagree with Bobby a little bit. I'm more impressed with Nash's second year because if you remember, Amari Stoudemire was out that year with, with the micro fracture. He played three games. Okay. My, go ahead, bro. And, and and it's true, and it was back and forth. It's all about narrative. Um, I don't know when they took um this survey and these writers did this top seventy four, but after watching that Michael Jordan last dance is where me as a novice learned so much of what IT did. He beat Magic, Bird, and Jordan in their prime, him being the lead catalyst for his team, the leader, creating that culture, bad boy, Pistons with the two big men behind him, with Rodman as well. Um, so I give him a lot of respect. K, let me hear to say this again. Kevin Durant is a way better player than Stephen Curry. He proved that two years in a row. But the reason why I agree that Curry should be over him is what everything that Dot says. He just changed the game. He, he, he helped create the narrative of, I'm so nice, I'm going to take a step back, still put up 27, and let this guy rock out for 33-34, if that makes sense, if you get my premise and my thought process. And this is why I think Duncan. it is. He did the Tim Duncan, exactly. And it was validated with back-to-back and being the first unanimous MVP. But if I'm starting a team today, it's KD. The only honorable mention that it really, I, I shed a thug tear, was Russell Westbrook. He's a top 50 player, y'all. Can you guys clap it up for him? <laughs> Doc, can you clap it up for him? Yeah, <laughs> I'll get Brooklyn. Thank you, I'll get thank you. Uh, he's so I, 42, and he still has the opportunity. With all the flaws that you guys bring up every single day, he is number 42 of all his flaws. And to me, um, that is so impressive. But go ahead, Jiggy. My, my problem with the list, I, I think that it was, like, too much into recency bias. Yeah. Like, Steph Curry is not a top 13 player ever. He's not. not at least not yet. Um, I think that LeBron is a top five player. I don't think he's number two yet. I think he, I, I think when it's all said and done, he will be, or at least has a really good chance to be. Um, I think that KD is not a top 14 player ever. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? And so a lot of it, so I don't like people that don't give full perspective. So one, when you talk about Isaiah Thomas, I think Isaiah Thomas is a top 20, 25-ish player. I'll take him over Stockton. I'll take him over Nash. I'll take him over Allen Iverson all day, every day. Um, but, what I, but what I will say is that Isaiah says, well, I beat Magic. It's like, eh, you really didn't. Magic tore his hamstring and, and played one game in the NBA Finals. And Byron Scott didn't even play that series. So if you're going to tell it, tell it. Also, um, when he says, you know, you see, you see how we had to bring that lake of detail. No, 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 a lot of people don't talk about Adrian Danley. Adrian Danley was a walking 25 a game. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it, they uh, traded Adrian Dantley and got Mark Aguirre, who's a borderline Hall of Famer, but was younger than Dantley. And the year before they got him, he averaged 30 points a game on the Western Conference uh, Finals runner-up Dallas Mavericks team that took the Lakers to seven. So Jiggy, I don't like hold on, hold on, hold on, wait. Stop, stop. No, 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 You have to, you gotta, you gotta listen. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do, understand. That, do that with the Warriors. Do that with the no, Warriors. No, but but you're not, but you're not, but, but you're not listening. Right. But you're not, right, but you're not listening. Right. So when people say that, oh, LeBron had these guys, Jordan had these. Oh, but Isaiah was kind of Isaiah and Joe Dumars, and it was just some tough guys. Nah, that team was loaded. That trust me when I tell you. That team was loaded, right? So a lot of the knock that a lot of these other players get, oh, they want super teams, they want this. When back in the day, all we wanted to do is just compete. Mostly every team that wins is, is a super team. You can't win without talent. And in the case of, of Isaiah, of a Steph, 
of a Stockton, of a Iverson. The reason why it's so rare for a little man to win championships is because they need the most help because it's a big man's game, period. So it's just like, let's pump the brakes a little bit and tell the whole story. That I, 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 I definitely hear you on that. I hear you. And BP, just to kind of go back to your point earlier, so Nash, that first MVP year was 18 and 10, 50, 40, yeah. 90. And then actually that second year without, uh, what's his name, Amari Stoudemire was 18, 12, and 50, 40, 90 again. So that's kind of why they probably threw him that, like, you know, back-to-back -back MVP. Um, yeah. But, like, with Josh, man, I mean – I, I get what you're saying. I feel where you're coming from, but I, I just feel like it's, I don't know. Like, I feel like I agree with your point. Like, Bron, I don't think he's top five yet. Like, we look at it like, look how he moves. Look how he flies. We will never be able, and I think, Zim, you say this a lot. We will never yeah. be able to know what Bird will do in 2020. We won't know what LeBron can do in 1985. We just can always assume and, like, imagine what it will be like. So I find it tough to put Braun over Bird yet because if you look at everything Bird accomplished on a year-to-year -year basis, the, the stats is, is, is a little better. It's, it's a little better of what he was – and it yeah. was a type of player. 6'9", could point forward, could rebound it, pass it, you know what I'm saying, could score it a little bit. So could, Bird was a way better shooter. So I, I think it's just yeah. tough to put LeBron at number two just yet. Even over like a like Will, I won't talk Wilt Chamberlain, I won't talk about. It. But like even over like a Kareem, like that's tough. That's tough, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, sometimes a lot of dudes don't give it to him, which I don't know why. But Sha narrative like Shaq average. I was looking the other day was crazy. I think it was like thirty six points in the finals, nineteen rebounds four blocks, and he shot 44% from the free throw, and they were trying to foul him. So imagine if he could shoot 80% or 60%, he would average probably 50 a game. Right. It's, it's, it's also hard to, like, talk about numbers because it shifts so much during the era. Like, so we was all watching, like, the last doc, right? I mean, the, um, um, the last dance doc, where we're looking at these dudes. Jordan's still averaging damn near 30. Malone's averaging 27. But the team is scoring, like, 86 points. 86. Yeah, I'm looking at these low ass scoring games, 79 to 84. But that's what made me respect MJ because, yo, in that game six, uh, I think I told Zim, his Zim with this, Pippen had eight. They scored 86 or whatever. The, Jordan had 45 points at 86. And you know, not for nothing, you could say the 90s is, is trash basketball. Uh, Jeff Horney can't guard him. But, yo, you got to understand that these dudes is doing everything in their power, doubling them, trapping them, hitting them. And he has almost half the team's points still. So that's why I'm like, how can you not, like, respect this? Like, and I don't want to do this, and I know y'all probably going to get upset at me, but the issue that I love LeBron, I respect LeBron. But the issue that I have with him, that he, did, he finally proved me wrong 2018. If you losing and your team's not good enough, you go get 50 every game if you have to. And that's kind of – I saw that game one when JR did the bonehead play. He went 51-8-8. Eight and eight. That's what kind of made me respect him. I'm like, damn, he can't do nothing more than what he just did tonight. Yeah, remember years ago I said that? Remember years ago I said that? I'll never forget. I was like, that's the one thing that hurts, that kills me about Braun. Like, Braun has the physical ability, just the physical ability – to go get to go average 35. Go and, get it. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like sometimes I think because like he's such a basketball mind and he wants to get everybody involved, like he's thinking six, seven steps ahead. Sometimes you gotta just not think uh B and C and just think A and make A your go-to thing and you gotta dominate at A. But um Facts. I think that's, that's why I, think. I agree with you on that. Like, that's the one knock I would ever have on um, but, like, but that's why – hold but, up, but, one sec, one sec, Zine. But that's why I think it took up until that Warrior super team for him to really get the respect of people because it was mm. like, all right, you going out here and you're averaging 40 and damn near triple-double every game. Yeah. But 
it took until 2017 for that to, to, to really happen. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you can't say that because even the uh I don't I don't remember what year. I want to say it was oh eight against the Pistons when he had like that. That's last, one game that, though. Like, but that's the type of situations yeah. I'm talking about. Like he's been in so many playoff games and we can only think of how many right now? We just thought yeah. of three different games. Well, you know the best I mean? game, the best playoff game he played was the Celtics game. He even let them get on mm. that. Yeah. Mm. They hadn't won a championship yet. He didn't even he didn't even let them breathe. And and they were supposed to close Miami out. He didn't even let them off the map. But not for nothing. I don't res- I don't give him respect for that, man. Z get mad. But I don't give him respect <laughs> for that, man. He got, D-way. He got Chris Bosch. And he's playing a, a KG after that. Uh, that knee knee injury. he's playing a beat up Celtics team. That is Celtics after 2010 is done. They they got no shots. Best player in 2000. All right, but keep that same energy. Uh oh, keep that, keep same, that energy. same energy when the barbershop talks and say, "Oh, Magic had AIDS. Bird had uh back issues. The Pistons were done and broke up. Everybody well, that's what was they watching. Say. That's what they all say. Right, so I all I right, all right, cool." But no, the Pistons nah, wasn't yo. The Pistons wasn't done and broke up. They hit his one of the yeah, Pistons. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. no yo, KG literally didn't play the 2010 playoffs. He literally was out for the the whole playoffs. Like he's at that point, it's crazy. That's their that's their last limbs. They're like out of their prime. And what kind of upsets me about LeBron? I know how good he is, but how can they ever? Why can they ever put him on that pedestal as second best? Of all time ever to play the game of basketball, disrespect everybody, the Magic Johnsons, the Kareems, the Birds, and bro, I don't 2011, he's the third leading scorer on that team. The third leading scorer. All right, all right, all right, all right listen, Zim, go ahead, Zim, jump in, please. That's all right. So that's his floor, the 2011, whatever. Him, Wade, they both came out and admit that LeBron had hesitancy because he just didn't want to take over. It's just not his nature. I don't know if you guys remember that documentary where he said his first coach ever told him, say, if you want to be a great player, you make everybody else great around you, and then you go get yours. And you can see that's what he do on a daily basis. We kill him when uh, George Hill missed that layup. We kill him for passing. If he turns that Kobe route, because he grew up in the era when Kobe was getting killed and deemed a gunner for taking all these shots. We killed Russell Westbrook. We killed these type of people for attack, attack, attack. You don't get involved. There's no chemistry. You yourself, Mr. New York, preach that to me. And he does that and then gets ridiculed for playing that style of basketball. I love and appreciate the fact that you admit that a lot of people, when he lost to those super GSWs team, everybody witnessed. There's nothing more this man singly can do. Well, besides being stacked against this well, great competitor. Well, Zim, Zim, I'll, I'll say this: in 2018, there was nothing he could he could do when there when there was no Irving. Yep. Or what about 2016? No, that's what Nah, nah. That, but that, but that's what I'm saying. Like. I'm talking about like I think that 2018 was really like, all right, they got no chance. Like we. That's why I can agree to that. 2017, when they lost five, like they was right there in game three. Like I, I don't. Bro, it, Josh, I'm with you, bro. Like if we go to the park, I got KD, I got Steph Curry, I got Clay Thompson, I got Braun, Kyrie, and Kev Love. Let's go, let's play. How can Houston take them seven games, but Braun can only get one? That's the questions that have never been answered for me. Houston was that much uh, better than Cleveland? No, nah, it's style of play. It's definitely well, style of play. Well, I'll say this, Zim. Um, just like, so, to kind of, like, give more perspective, like, just because I'm, like, a little bit older and, and remember a little bit more, and just having, like, read so much about it, watched so many games, like, Jordan and Kobe both reached points in their career when they started winning championships that wasn't like just attack, 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 especially in the playoffs where you're running the triangle or even if they're the ones pri- uh, primarily handling like the basketball, like they, they said you could tell what kind of game it was by Michael Jordan's first quarter. He's, he's like getting people involved because he knows at that point when he hit 29, 30, 30 um, uh, 31, I can do this shit on the muscle. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I can, I, I can get my 30 no matter what. It's very rare for like Jordan to be like, yo, I'm coming out and I'm just and I'm just going for the gusto right off the rip. Maybe if they were like down in a series or 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 if he sent something. So I think that LeBron's greatest strength, and I, I really hate to make this about Bron, but let's just talk about the guys that they have in the top five. You got the Jordan, you got Bird. You got Magic, you got Braun, and you got Russell, right? Russell, I no, no, no. You got top fives. Uh, Bird's Kareem. not in that top five. Who's not in the, uh, in the top Jordan, five. Jordan, Braun, Kareem, Russell, Magic. Okay, so out of the four guys that I seen, like Magic went to the finals nine year, nine times in twelve years. Mm. Like, and I just don't want us to like kind of overlook that, like, like. Because everybody now gives you gives us that same stat. Braun been to eight straight. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that but that's what I'm saying. Like so, like let's not. And, but Magic won five. I know, I know. But I'm saying I, I, I'm agree. Was with Magic you always was Magic that same stat that oh Braun been to only, eight straight? Like Magic the best player on all those teams. Um, well, he won the 19 Finals MVP. You, I, I, once I, again, I'm asking you, the historian. You oh, watched, no, his, you read. His first you did, one, his was first he one, he wasn't best, when he won the MVP. His first one, he was nah. His first one, he wasn't. But he, he wasn't. wasn't. But for you guys that love to to to, to come at Steph, he won the Finals MV, MVP Game Six on the road versus Dr. J and company, 42, 15, and seven. No, you know why LeBron James is number two? It's just simple as that. He. He laces up, he goes on your team, your automatic championship contender. He went uh, to Cleveland. It wasn't then, last you year. You, he got hurt. But we wasn't the championship. Not for nothing. He, 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 he was second in the West. He never thought that was the case with Bird. He was second in the got hurt. The Celtics yo, was always a contender. Yeah, with bro, Bird. you nah, yo, you realize that Larry Bird, listen, he, Larry Bird, Shaq, Magic, all them, all them dudes came on the teams that really wasn't that successful. Even though um, Reem was the best player in the, in the in the in the league, they had missed the playoffs three out of the four years before Magic got there. So to go from out the playoffs to the championship two years is nuts. No, Magic the won the championship. Championship contender. In but that's the no same with not nah, when he first got it's in the league. Good. Does he Magic? Magic was 19 when he got into the league. And one, and how many years? And how many years he played at Michigan State? Two. All right. So listen, you got to understand. He was understand, one year like, older than LeBron. LeBron. It, it doesn't matter. He got two years of college experience. Like you got, I, I just people people don't factor in like the little things. And I'm I'm just done with the LeBron slight and. It's not slight, but I just feel like, like no, no, I think I just because think it's we we let things yeah we we let things go with other people and, and like who and then have this like who what, like who I, I I will say I will say I will say this I'll say Michael Jordan had privilege to be coached by a Hall of Famer two of them Roy Williams and Dean Smith LeBron never had that he had the opportunity to be coached by Phil Jackson LeBron never had that. Is this right. valid points? So can I? No, like no I, I, I like disagree. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Listen, God. right? Dean He's Smith. Dean disagree? Smith had never. Dean Smith had never won a championship until that. Uh, until that shot, Jordan won. Matter. Is he considered? But John, ja, but see, what you have to understand at that point in time, these guys aren't considered the legends we see them as today because the players that were there. That was makes them us view them as legends. When Phil first got to Chicago, they didn't mess with Phil. They didn't even want to run with him as the coach. They and they did, and then they found out they got the ball out of Michael Jordan. So the but they kind of they kind of grew at the Phil grew with. If anything, Phil got blessed. This is crazy. Now they're the not Hall of Fame coaches because they had nah, to play. you're not. You're Phil's not, not a not. Hall of Fame coach in '89, bro. In '89, he's starting. But you could he tell coach he the had the attribute. <laughs> he hadn't had coached attribute. the game yet. That's he it. Had the, the how can you say that he had, a, he had a really Maybe Black could have been a Hall of Famer. Famer. We don't know. He only got a year. He's not an experienced coach. I can understand if you said that about Kobe, but at that point, he's kind of learning as he's going. Is yo, I, is Eric Spo it. yo, Eric Spolstra had had like yo. He hasn't won since he didn't have the best player in, in, in the – every time Phil Jackson won, he had the best player in the league. 
He did. I agree. That's so, another story. Eric Spolstra but, won two chips. Yo, Ty Lu won a championship, bro. Ty, yo, Ty Lu was in three straight finals. I didn't. He, but I didn't shit. mention him. He's and, not a Hall and, of Fame. Can coach. I make a He's quick point? As a Hall of but you not. But but you. Can I make a quick point? This guy's showing. Sure and I hate to. I hate to keep beating on this, but yo, oh. Magic Bird, Michael Jordan, Shaq, Kobe. There is never going to be a question or a point in history where you could go find a championship game and they are the averaging 17 points and lose. No, you can't defend that. You can't defend – there's no way in hell. I can't. Let me, I can't. Yo, let me ask you a question. That's if the, Kobe that's Bryant, that's if Boris Dial would have tried to guard Kobe Bryant one-on-one, what he would have did? If Boris Dial and Jason Kidd tried to guard Kobe Bryant one-on-one – I seen Kobe, I seen Kobe throw a hissy fit in the fourth quarter and then shoot. What about that one? Speak on that. What he would he on have done if they was trying I don't, to guard I don't, him? Like, stop, stop this nonsense. Man. This Everyone has, has flaws. I, to I see, I see Stephen Curry. Everybody has flaws are correct, but you can't put him number two. All right, two. hold on. Like, hold on, hold on. Listen, you right, can put like, him number two. I don't like, right? See, now, I'm going to stop you, right? So, I, all these, right, yo, so I just posted a status on Facebook, like, like yo, I'll take Steph Curry all day over Isaiah Thomas, drawing all, like, the, all, like, the old heads out, right? So someone brought that behind the back pass up, and I'm like, oh, you mean like the uh, pass that Isaiah Thomas threw that Bird stole and won the series? That one? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah, always you know, a, a situation to come back oh, to yo, a situation. Magic, yo, yeah. bro, Magic Johnson oh, dribbled out the clock in two NBA Finals losses, and he had to live with on Sports Illustrated being called Tragic Johnson. You thought that, that the Tragic Johnson name came You're making my point. You're making my mm-hmm. point. Everybody Johnson, has finals. Kobe never scores. averaged no 17 and no finals. Jordan never had that moment <laughs> in the finals. Don't you ever, Shaq averaged 17. And, it, and, 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 and this is my 17. thing. People always act like, you, 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 thank God this last dance happened. This is why I'm so appreciative. Because before this, you would think Michael Jordan only played six NBA careers. That nah, was it. He played six. That's how people act. I'm not saying you guys. I know, the, but that's how people act. This is what I'm saying. There's flaws. Things happen. Like, and I'm not excusing um, 2011. That's what you're always gonna come up to. But LeBron James come on your team. You're what about automatically 2010? going to the finals. What about 2010? What and and yo, hold on, hold on. And let me let me let me jog your memory. Game five, he scored like 13 points. Remember, he was like, oh my elbow. Then his elbow was fine for game six. Remember the um. Remember it was a. It was a. Did they win the series? Did they win the no. series? No, no. They, they lost to the Celtics. Let me just oh. make a. Can I make a real wait, quick, real quick? Because Larry Hughes, yeah. Eric Snow, that they team. They were they yo they they Eric were two Snow. two at home court. They won sixty six <laughs> games. They won sixty games. They won sixty six. Eric with, Snow. With, so how, with, so with, how, with how Mo Williams? With Mo Williams? They Mo won. Six, how they win sixty six? Right, so, so his second best play was Mo Williams, and that right. was the All Star that year. So, bro, it's not always about like looking at at the players. Sometimes teams. You just thought this was about coaching. Yeah, like yo. Sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is, it's not together. looking about the players. The players. And the yeah. point that I want to make, I think, that, like, I think the correlation Z makes sometimes is that MJ never. MJ's human, he lost. Everybody loses. Like, Black Jesus, whatever you want to call him, nobody going to ever win in the National Basketball Association without some form of team. But the disconnect, the comparison that I try to make is look at the body of work even when he was losing. Like, you can't find a blemish. Like, you can't say, damn, this dude got, this dude got exposed. He got strapped. He did it. He's his lowest average in the playoffs. I think it's like twenty nine or something like that. That is. Uh, but then, so I'm not. I'm not taking away from LeBron. I'm not taking away from LeBron's greatness. But that's what I say separates from being number one. And and then I think the guy that comes next, LeBron doesn't compare to. And and, and, and and that's the difference between you going from Doug Collins playing this style, shoot, 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 shoot get all these numbers up, MVP, this, the, the switching to Phil Jackson. Sit the hell down. This is what we're doing. People, other people need to touch the ball. So how do you have a 41 in 93? 
Because he, he's a great player in that system. So that's, that's what I said. That's what makes that. the separation. Zim, I think, yo, know, that, that, that's really narrative because I remember they said How's it's... How's that narrative? Because listen to me. That, I just listen watched to that listen two to weeks ago. No, no, listen to me. I'm going to talk to you. So, like, people have to find something to, like, write about, like, a distinct... Oh, my God. So, <laughs> like, yo, I'll never forget this, right? I'm, yo, I'm, like, a top five Laker fan in the country. Literally, they said, oh, well, in 2009, Kobe trusted his teammates more than 2008, and, that, and, and that's why they won. He literally had the same numbers. The only difference was we actually had Bynum and Trevor Ariza. That was the only difference. Kobe was literally the same exact player. He literally did not change anything. He averaged the same a number of assists, same amount of rebounds, same amount of points, like same field goal percentage. It's just that he had a little bit more help, like, our role plays were healthy. Like, yo, Jordan, I, like, yo, Jordan still averaged, like, over 30 points. He averaged over 30, he averaged 93, averaged 33 for the year. Yeah, yeah, like, yo, that, 33. That, that's what we're killing I'm me. not, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm down. not disputing that. He lost for seven straight years. So, but he lost. Mean anything, but, but and then you're justifying it. So, no, but then you justify it by saying it doesn't matter while he was losing. He's putting up crazy numbers to attach to 2011 what LeBron failed to do. And I can't dispute that. LeBron going to have to hold LeBron that win his out. first one? Was but not for one? nothing, if you're going to lose and you get a best player in the NBA and you score the seven points a game, something's wrong with that, Z. Hey, yo, you want to hear something funny, Doc? Right. Yo, Doug Collins last year in Chicago, Jordan averaged 22 shots a game. Phil Jackson's first year, he averaged 24 shots a game. Like Z, so, so that, you know what I'm saying? That, that, means, that, means, that, means, that means nothing. That means nothing. Yeah, that That's why I can respect That's 2018, Z. That's why I can respect 2018 because you lost, but you showed me 51, 8, and 8. You may have lost in 2000, uh, 2015, but you averaged a triple double and scored and played four against teams. a juggernaut. But I can't respect you losing and you only averaging seventeen or you're scoring less than thirty in finals. I games? can't. I, I can't. I, I can't. But all I gotta say is this: and we're gonna end off on this. You know what I mean? I, I can't dispute 2011. But all I can say is LeBron James. They got him ranked number two by experts, NBA experts. I respect everybody in here, but. Experts, and he's the only one in that top five that has the ability to add to his legacy. So whether or, you want to put him in the number four, or, lose, or, the, or, or lose. deteriorate, you're right. you're right, or deteriorate. Don't but forget, don't that, forget that part. Because bully what tactics. I want to, because it's not bully tactics. Because what happens is people forget about Washington. Oh, he was old then. They don't count his last two and a half years at Washington, and, and, and he's so great. He uplifts everybody. That atrocity over there teammates coming out he's a bad like you don't hear that about LeBron not one single person so yes narrative have to do with something the stat the fact that you're in you're in top three in three major categories and top three all of them in the game of basketball you have the right to be that and I, I me I'm leaning towards the experts that's the ESPN right the same Please experts the no same people. experts that read it um, Isaiah Thomas, number, number 31. I think that was all due to the fact <laughs> of <laughs> he doesn't have great personal re- – like, the reason why John Stockton got oh, over it, No, no, no is this an expert it's or is this a, personal oh, relationship? Oh, personal oh, views oh, are an expert. Oh. It only took 90 <laughs> minutes, but we got him. The relationship only took 90 though. minutes, but we got him. You are something else. <laughs> What's the next topic? What's the next topic? What's the next topic? Right. <laughs> Last topic of the night. COVID-19 has completely changed everything. Not just sport. Mm-hmm. It's changed everything, right? So... A lot of schools, colleges, I should, I should say, are already saying like, "Yo, when we're doing virtual, um, we're doing virtual uh, learning in the first in the fall semester." So now, where's the justification going to come for athletes to be on campus if they're truly only if they're students first, athletes second? It's not safe for you to have everyone else there but you're gonna have them there playing games in 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 um in um, empty stadiums what's y'all thoughts what's the justification gonna have to be 
I would say it would, it would, the justification is if you have certain sports teams, it's still a, con a contained environment. Um, honestly, I think it's going to be hard for football to come back just because of, again, the physicality, guys on top of each other, quo uh, close quarters. Um, I think football, if it does come back, it's strictly a financial decision, and it's not because of health is okay or it's, it's a healthy decision. Um, but, again, I think it, the justification when it does come out or if it does come out from the NCAA will be that it's a contained environment with just these people in their environment. They're quarantined from everybody else or from gen pop of a college quarters. Um, and then, again, also with that, you have the medical staffs that come with these teams. Um, so that would be – obviously, I would hope that would be ramped up um, but yeah, that's the only thing I can say is them saying that it's a contained environment. As far as like the, for the regular students, I don't, I can't see a justification. If, if I can't go to, if I can't sit in a classroom, uh, next to somebody, if I can't go to a regular, uh, cafe on campus without a mask on, I can't see somebody being able to play football. So I don't know. I mean, uh, so. Uh, my fault, dog. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, because you, you, you work in the school system. You have way more expertise on this. Yeah, so um, I totally, you know, disagree. At the end of the day, they're going to have to lose a lot of millions, especially if you emphasize Absolutely. the student before the athlete. And if you somehow try to make some type of plans to get these athletes to, then you know that these students are profit. They are for the dollar. They are uh, being exposed and um, it cannot happen. So I am for, if there is no school going on, unfortunately there is no fall sports. Um, you're going to have to take that financial hit. Um, you are putting these kids who are not professional athletes who have professional careers and contracts at risk um, for the benefit of the school. Um, it just cannot happen, even if it is virtually. Unfortunately, those same guidelines have to be adhered to in regards to the playing field of all sports, not even the you know the money makers, even down to cricket, lacrosse, you know, whatever the low budget type sports. It just cannot happen. And um, I think if the NCAA pushes for that, it would expose them even more of um, them exploiting our student athletes for profit even though a lot of these schools do get a lot of their funding and building and gyms and this and that, um, music or theaters from generation of sports, the generation income of sports. But unfortunately, this is a situation where they just have to sit on their hands and they can't proceed without it. No school, no classes, no sports. And that devastates me hearing that. No, I, I agree. I got a, Zim, that was a good premise. Um, I know back in the day, if you didn't go to practice, you couldn't play. Or if you didn't go to school, you didn't you couldn't play unless it was like a valid reason. But I think on the flip side, like something's got to happen because a lot of these kids, believe it or not, like academics always come first, but they are in that school to try to make better lives for themselves and their families. So I, I think like, yes, it would show that it's a business and like the NCAA, that's already obvious that they're profiting. But also right. on the flip side, there's kids that are able to profit and benefit off that season and that exposure too. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's always like a, like a, that's what we call it, like a, a Debbie Down or like a, a hidden gem that gets an opportunity that wasn't thought of like that before that can change his life and the next few generations in his family. Um, so I, I think that's something that needs to be taken in consideration. But um, I did see today that, some schools like uh, Notre Dame is having kids back for the fall semester, August 10th. So I think they are going to start. What I'm, what I'm starting to see now with this whole COVID thing, um, COVID-19, is they're going with the mindset that we need to be out there. People need to be out there, build our immune system. So, and they're kind of making guidelines of people that's above the age of 65 or have like other health risks to like kind of be mindful of that and to stay home. But I, I think all in all, they're not going to let that, like, you know, that pass. So. Mm -hmm. I do got all my really good points. 
I'm 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 kind of leaning towards more like Zim. So if the kids are not in school, they don't that 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 school is not playing sports. Um, it's funny. I was uh, talking to one of my friends, who's a former, uh, Division One assistant coach. You guys might know who he is in this in this chat. He said that the NCAA took a one point two billion dollar loss with the NCAA tournament not being played. Yeah, I saw no, that. Madness. Yeah. Yeah. So that that tournament goes to fund everything else. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about D three, D two. Excuse me. Schools that like you know that like don't make money from sports, the girls. Excuse me, the girls tournaments and stuff like that. So if you bring football back, it's like we got to bring every other fall sport back because of title. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, me personally, I think that, I mean, I think that schools should open up, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that, All right, awesome. you know, these young people need to be on college campuses and learning and stuff like that, as long as there's some kind of social distancing put in, in, um, put in place. But I think that no, I agree, no school, no sports, period, period. No, I agree. And I'll break the news, man. Uh, Bron just got on the Zoom. He said that that infamous picture with him and, and, and MJ, they was actually on the same team and they killed everybody. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's Yo, hilarious. on the NCAA thing, too, I seen uh, that they're trying to cut all um, – all sports that are non uh, that don't bring in revenue, non revenue mm -hmm. sports. So that's another situation that could be happening. You know what I mean? So sports like field hockey and diving and things like that are not bringing in revenue. Those sports can get cut. Yeah, to me, I, I just woof. That's so dicey to me. I feel like lawsuits are gonna come from that discrimination, protesting. Like, why? Yeah, why is uh, your why is your skill level more valued than my skill level at my choice of sport? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I it, they'll, it, go, they'll, they'll look at it from like a gross, gross profit um, yeah. aspect. And they'll be like, listen, like this is actually costing the school to keep this program. Yeah. So that, yeah. Because yo, literally like, yo, a lot of people in post-secondary, this not sports take, but a lot of people in the post-secondary world are, are like shaking in their boots a little bit because like the Browns, the URIs, the, all, all, all the state schools across the country will be straight. All the, you know, like the big, huge schools that have great traditions are, are going to be straight. But a lot of those all level, private schools are going to be like, might be on the chopping block. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's going to get crazy. It's going to get dicey. Um, I'm interested to see how it plays out. I, I saw um, my younger brother sent me something saying that, California said that at first no sports the whole 2020. Now Gavin Newsom, I, I think that uh, mid June he's gonna try to try, try to start opening up some sports. Yeah, sure. And I mean I, yeah. I think that at the end of the day it's just public pressure because so much of our lives, especially as men or even women who are who are sports fans, I don't want to come off as sexist. The calendar and the rhythm of our life is based around sports, man. Sad and we all know that firsthand, us playing sports, us coaching sports, you know what I mean? So we know how that vibe goes, even with the children, the state, the money, the flow, uh, just the daily life with schedules and practices. So, um, yeah, this COVID-19, man, this is something that 50, 100 years from now, they're going to talk about it. This is going down in the history books and, I felt like we could have handled it as a country a little better, but I seen a lot of, I can't say positive things, but I seen people coming together and doing a lot of, you know, dope things during these times, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. wow. Especially just in all the work fields that we work with, uh, mm -hmm. just the technology wise of how it's been able to carry us. And I couldn't see this happen in mid nineties, you know what I mean? Um, just the way that we're able to communicate how we can do right now. But now nah, it's all love, man, all love. Yeah, for sure, man. Yo, so this was another one for the books, man. We had some jokes. We had some arguments. Uh, you know 
saying? Every bruh, now and again, bruh. I gotta, huh? Bruh. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, it's been a real good one. Um, all right, fellas. Hold on, hold on. Right, I got yo, one Dottie, Dottie, Oh, we got one. Dreads. Oh, yeah, one. Huh? Let go. Everyone, check out Dottie's dress. Zoom in on them dreads. <laughs> <laughs> Dottie's. <Dot> <laughs> <Little> worms. <laughs> all right, fellas.